Well, good afternoon, everybody. Here I am at our home offices in Naples, Florida, and I thought it's very, very important that I talk to you about what's going on in the real world. Most importantly, what's going on in Washington, D.C. The FDA is trying to regulate premium cigars. In a nutshell, the definition presently in the United States tax code is very, very broad in general of what a premium cigar is. It includes products such as Philly Blunts, Swisher Sweets, Blunt Wraps, and a lot of other products that are used by children. These type of products are available at 7-Eleven, your gas stores. A lot of these products, you just take the tube out, you fill it with marijuana, and you smoke illegal substances or controlled substances, whatever your flavor of the day might be. Unfortunately, we're the unintended consequence. A premium cigar is an art form. It's a culture that's transcended over generations. By the time you put a seedling in the ground to the time you get a cigar in a box, it takes four to five years. 300 different hands touch the tobacco. You have to be 18 years old to enter a premium cigar store. It is something that's enjoyed like a great bottle of wine, a single malt scotch, and that's why a premium cigar is very, very unique than all these other tobacco products that the FDA tends and seeks to regulate. Now let me tell you the consequences of what the regulation would lead to. First, you would not be allowed to go to your favorite cigar store, actually look at a cigar, touch a cigar, feel a cigar, have somebody explain to you what the wrapper is, whether it's Sumatra, it's Ecuador, whether it's Maduro, Connecticut, you can tell whether it's box press, you can look at the cap of the cigar to check the construction, the head of the cigar, you can smell the cigar. You wouldn't be able to make those choices which are now available to you. That is very, very important because one of the most important things about making a great quality cigar is to be able to talk to you about the different seeds, the different varietals, the different tobaccos, how long they've been aged, how long they've been fermented, how well the construction is, how the cap is, is, how the filler is put in the cigar, and the overall taste profile of the cigar. So we would be relegated to literally getting a black and white catalog just like this. You'd get the catalog by your retailer, and you'd have to pick your cigars from them. Secondly, you would be able to look at the beautiful packaging, the boxes that we spend so much time on to really deliver this fine, artful product. And then finally, most importantly, what's really going to hurt us is as a manufacturer, every time I make a blend, over here I've got 10 different blends that I plan on smoking for products that we're going to release in 2014. We're working on them now. We go up to 80, 85, 90, 100 different blends that we try, constantly changing the filler, binder, one leaf at a time, letting the cigars evolve, letting the cigars age before we make a decision. Well, every time we release a blend, we'd have to actually send the blends over to the FDA like case studies like a pharmaceutical drug. Probably have to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to get that approved. I don't know why, there's nothing in here but natural water. But you know, all of a sudden the FDA is gonna be the regulating expert, means more taxes, more fees, and a bunch of nerds that really don't know anything about premium cigars. And they're gonna be in our life. So what we're trying to do is we're explaining to them that these products are very unique, very different. What can you do? What we've done is we've gone to Washington and actually created a narrow definition of what a premium cigar is. That narrow definition says that you have to use all tobacco leaf in the wrapper, in the binder. The cigars have to weigh X amount of pounds per thousand. There can be no filters, no tips, anything added to the end of the cigar. This is very, very important. Hence, we created legislation in Washington, H.R. 1631, and this is in the House presently pending. We've got 100, actually 212 co-sponsors at the present time that are actually asking for the FDA to give us an exemption from taking over and controlling or looking at or administrating over cigars. Finally, in the Senate, we've just started to work on it, and we've got about 11 or 12 senators. So this is a very, very important topic. This is something can wipe us out. You might not have any more print advertising about cigars. You can't use the word cigars on the hats and T-shirts, possibly. You can have a sign outside your store that says cigars. Everything that we do, and the beauty about cigars is, you know, it's enjoyed by all people. Doesn't matter what race, doesn't matter what religion, blue-collar worker, CEO. When you smoke a cigar, you're all equal. And that's in the day of Facebook and Twitter, where nobody really has a civil conversation. 
you actually sit down, whether it's at your favorite store or cigar lounge, and you actually talk about life, about politics, about sports. You take time away from this busy world that drives you crazy. And you just relax and you chill. And that's the beauty. And you've automatically made a new friend. So please get involved. Join Cigar Rights of America, CigarRights.org. This organization, along with the International Pipe Cigar Retail Association, is fighting for your rights and freedoms in Washington, D.C. As an adult, you need to protect them. Every day, I'm in the streets, I'm in cigar stores, and I meet people from all over the country. But what really touches me the most is when our soldiers in Afghanistan and Iraq come back and they send us beautiful flags that are signed by them, sacrificing their life and limb to protect our freedoms and our rights. And guess what they enjoy after a hard day being out on the road, being there, taking bullets and dodging all kinds of enemy fire, okay? They're there for you fighting for our freedoms and our rights. And that's what this country is about. And that's what we need to realize that we fought for these freedoms. The walls came down in China and Russia. And guess what? We can't be that socialistic company. We are that, that country. We are that country that believes that, you know, cigars are something. The soldiers, they love them. They enjoy them. After a rough day of work, we send them boxes. There's just one thing they have to look forward to in Afghanistan. And this is what they're fighting for. And here, our government, on a daily basis, is taking away our freedoms, our rights, and our privileges. People need to get a life. They need to look after what's going on. We have more important issues like education, people that are poor in the streets, people that don't have homes, infrastructure problems. There's a lot more going on in this country. Let's focus America. Let's get our act together. And please, join Cigar Rights of America. Website is cigarrights.org. Fight for your right and freedom. Because guess what? Nobody else will. Enjoy your day.